today I'm going to talk about something very powerful, which is still on prayer. And the thing is that if you've been praying for some time, you will have experienced this before. What to do when answered prayer lingers? What to do when answered prayer lingers? That means I've been praying, but I've not seen answers. Like, that's not new. In fact, some people, it's so bad that when they see answers, it's a surprise. That's an abnormality. It's an abnormality for prayers not to be answered. You must understand that. It is an abnormality for prayers not to be answered. God's will is that he always answers prayers. That's God's will. It's an abnormality. And when prayer are not answered, there's a lot of frustration that we feel. I've noticed over time, when people's prayers are not answered, people begin to come up with a lot of ideologies. People say that, maybe God doesn't like me. Maybe God doesn't love me. Maybe God doesn't exist. Maybe God is punishing me. See what the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12. Let's look there quickly. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12. Let's read together once ago. The Bible says, hope defiled makes what? So, when I keep praying about this approval and it's taking a long time, my heart becomes sick. When I keep praying about this certain breakthrough and it doesn't happen, my heart becomes sick. And I'm saying so because many of us are in that situation, you're wondering why I'm discouraged, why you're depressed. You're really discouraged and depressed because you're just wondering, I'm doing everything I can and God can do it. Why has He not done it for me? And if, if you're in that situation, you're wondering, when is it going to happen? What do I do when I'm praying about something? I'm praying about my business. I'm praying for my husband. I'm praying for somebody and it's not happening. What exactly do I do? The reason why I need to explain that to you today is that before you jump into conclusion, what conclusion? That God is not faithful. That God is not good. That God is not kind. That God hates you. Listen to this. And I don't want to get to the point in your life when you become that Christian that does not believe in prayer and when you pray it's a religious activity not that you really believe in it I will tell you something I know a lot of people that do not believe in prayer even though they pray and in fact if they have an answer to prayer they will be shocked that they have an answer to prayer but God is a prayer answering God. See, so, so let, 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 let's look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I just want to give an example of, I just want to give you examples, you know. And let me say something to you. The one of the reason I'm dealing with this is this. The more confident, everyone take note of this. The more confident you are that your prayer works, the more it works. Listen to this. This is a top secret of prayer. Prayer works with confidence. I'm going to jump. First John 5 14. First John 5 14. That's not my scripture. But I'm going to jump, jump. Prayer works with confidence. The more confident, see, the more confident you are about your prayer. See what the Bible says. Are you ready? Come on. Are you ready? Yes, Let's read what to go. And this is the confidence that we have. Did you see? He said, This is what the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask, anything did you see the foundation of the asking is what confidence the question is when you pray do you pray from confidence or maybe the more confident you are you must be able to say my god answer prayers i, I love the way elijah said it elijah said the lord that answered by fire let him be god because he knew his god answers by fire the more you know your god answers by fire the more your prayer will work Oh, shaka bala comandante. Oh, somebody praise the Lord. So one of the things that happens is that Satan attacks our confidence. I want to notice that an attack on your confidence in prayer is a, an attack on your prayer life and is an attack on your spiritual life. Because once you lose confidence in prayer, then you stop praying. I want you to stop praying. Then you become you start becoming weak. So someone says, "So why do I have to pray, pray, pray before God answers?" That's what we're talking about today. How you keep praying? What goes on? Second Corinthians chapter twelve, in verse seven. 
Let's look at Apostle Paul. Somebody say glory. glory. The Bible says this. Unless I should be exalted above measure. This is Paul talking about himself. And through the abundance of revelation that was given to me. That was given to me a fall in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above it. So the messenger of Satan buffeted him, punished him. See verse 8. Verse 8. For this thing, this I'm going to. I besought the Lord three times that it may depart from me. Take note of this. Paul says, When I had this attack, then I prayed about it. Then it didn't work. Then I went back and prayed about it. It didn't work. And I went back and prayed. See, I want to assume something. How Paul was counting the amount of time he was praying. Because for Paul, it is not common for me not to pray and not get answer. So he took note. Some of you don't even count the amount of time you pray about something because as long as you know, I'll just keep praying, Sha. Anyone pray. But I also want to see how Paul touches this. And Paul goes like, I prayed about it three times. Some of you prayed about it ten times. But the question is that, hey, when I'm praying for my child, when I'm praying for a job, when I'm praying to get pregnant, when I'm praying for a deliverance, and the answer is lingering, what do I do at that time? Because you can get depressed, you can, I'm losing it. First of all, let me say this quickly, and this will help a lot. One of the ways you pray, you must be careful, is when you pray for somebody else. The reason why is that when you pray for somebody else, you must always remember that what you must always remember that the will of the person is also involved that's why you can't pray someone to become your husband you can't pray someone to become your wife it's not possible the reason why is that if their heart is focused on somebody else ah the prayer that will remove their heart from that person because prayer is not witchcraft or manipulation praise God so on, and, and that's why you know sometimes let, let me deal with this policy of Christian. You know they say God has one husband for you. Say, there's, a, there's a bone of your bone. There's one bone that is your. What about the person died when you were young? No, no. Think about it. Some of the crazy things we say. Some of we just Christians just come up with crazy things. Say, there's one bone of your bone. There's one person that God has destined you to marry. What about if the person marries somebody else? You'll be boneless. Someone say, I'm looking for the one, the one. There's no the one. There's no what the one. What there is is that they are probable. See, God knows you, so there are probabilities that can fit you. I'll give an example. You drive a Toyota car. Toyota what? Prado. They smash the what's that light now? Headlamp. When they smash the headline, do you go and buy the headlamp? Hey. No. They, they are going, you are going to buy headlamps that is fit for your car. Because headlamps have been made to fit that particular car. Hey. So when you go there and say, I'm looking for the headlamp. He said, which one? He said, this is my car. This, this. There's no D. Hey. We know your car. We know the syrup. We know he was produced with a series. In that series, all this headlamp goes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Be free. Hey. The same thing. Does God tell you who to marry? I don't think so. God directs you. Yes. You know what direction is? Turn left, turn right. The reason why God doesn't go to marry is this. If he tells you go to marry, you will hold him responsible for what happens in your marriage. Yeah. Who did it? Adam. Yeah. Adam did it. Yeah. Adam said, Adam said, the wife you gave to me, like this is not my problem. God said, hey, hey, hey. the wife I gave to you, I will never give somebody else. Yeah. Question Who in the Bible did God give your wife? You're trying to come up with the name, right? Come on. Add Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Peter, Mark, Luke, Judas. But the Bible itself says that. It says, it says, 
you should choose whosoever findeth a man a wife look on that in your looking there's guidance you better choose for me choose. you better open your eyes praise the lord i said praise the lord i said praise the lord all right back to back to the teaching i don't even know how i got here <laughs> okay it's almost that god must really want to talk to someone because this is next month's teaching i don't even know how we got here yeah yeah praise the lord okay so we're talking about prayer so there are all these things that goes on in prayer so hey i've been praying about something and yeah i was talk, trying to tell you about when you're praying for somebody else and i said when well, you're praying for somebody else you must be careful because you know sometimes i get to pray for people so i also noticed it but a classic example was brother kenny hagen kenny hagen you know if you read if you don't know about kenny hagen i'll give you a background you will hear stories from pastor debo he said that his ministry changed when he met kenny hagen that's when it's changed you hear bishop where they say his ministry changed when he had kenny hagen you hear archbishop best the host speak of kenny hagen you hear pastor chris speak of kenny hagen very prolific man of god is late now and kenny hagen was used of god in healing might signs and wonders Mi- many miracles healed so kenny hagen was called to pray for this man that was very sick i was going to die and to pray that god will bring him back so can go there and laid hands on him and the way it works can again is that the way god walks with him when he laid hands on somebody he said it will feed anointing flow from his right hand to touch the person and once he feels that the person will be healed he said in this person's instance something strange happened he put his hand on him the anointing rushed out and in a split of a second the anointing rushed back and he said what's happening and god said he's going to die Ah, he said, God, ah, but I'm here praying. Why would he die? And God said to him, There are spiritual laws that this man has put in motion that is too late to reverse right now. Ah, can I get it? Understand? So, you know, but God gives revelation. It's not as if God gives explanation sometimes. So he called the wife. He said, Why would your husband die? This is, this is. and the wife said, Ah, this is what happened since i met my husband and we're young in our 20s my husband had always said he would die at 40. he said why he said because his father died at 40. his grandfather died at 40. his older brother died at 40. the oldest started at 40. their uncles are at 40. he said he knows he told me that just be aware i will die at 40. i can again say no wonder because words have gone so far they can't be reversed and because it was the one that initiated it you cannot just come and cancel it. He himself must be the one to reverse what he has done. Because he has put spiritual motion in place. And let me tell you something there. Some of you, the problem you are facing today is what you have said. I know I can't make it to this country. It's following you. What you, you said it. You said, ah, that's how everybody marry me and go. Everybody will marry and go. Only will be left. That's what's worrying you. But there are operations that guide this so we're talking about about prayer we're talking about prayer very very very, very important so in the new testament unanswered prayer is an abnormally i wanted to see that unanswered prayer is an abnormally you know unanswered prayer is an abnormally the bible says in christ all the promise of god are yes and amen so the question is this i want to jump quickly the question is this what do I do when my prayer are prayed and the answer is pending? Why is even happening? So number one, one of the reasons why we pray and our answers are pending is because of instability. Let's look at this. Some Genesis chapter 49 verse 4. This is one of the reasons why we have issues in prayer. Are you there? You need to respond. Are you there? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Let's read one to go unstable as what come on can i hear you say it hold on one of the issues why people answer legals is because people are unstable they are what unstable unstable today today you believe you've received the job then tomorrow you change your mind let me show you another scripture. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 verse 6. James chapter 1 verse 6. Why answer prayers lingers? 
Answered prayers lingers because people are unstable. James chapter 1 verse 6. The Bible says, let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea. Driven with wings and toes. Verse 7. The Bible says this. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Did you see that? So, one of the reasons why people don't answer linger is because people are waving. Today, I believe I've received the healing tomorrow. I don't even know what is going on. I don't even know what is going on. God, won't you pity me? Today, I know the business will work tomorrow. I'm frustrated. I want to give up. Stay somewhere. Stay somewhere. Are you on the side of faith or are you on the side of doubt? This is very powerful. This is very unusual. One of the reasons why prayer, because we're not stable. You know, I, I'll give an example. And I said this is a fresh story for Pastor, Pastor Deji's testimony. Many years ago, Pastor Deji had this no, um, nail problem. And the to, his, toenail was, his toenail was upgrading the, the toe. So if you've experienced that before, the nail will begin to tear the toe. And it will begin to bleed. So when I saw it, I was like, oh. So what normally we require is an operation. They will cut into the toe and trim the nail and it just heal back itself so because it became disgusting i could see his leg i was like so i said to him why you know why don't you just go and see a doctor and let's take care of this and he was like pastor Olaji, if i can't use my faith to heal a toenail what can i use my faith to do i said well that's true use your faith but after some weeks i just noticed the less the leg was getting worse so i said I actually don't want to go to those They said, no, 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 no. I believe I've received my healing. Uh, and that's how faith works. Because sometimes you just have to be persistent. Then weeks, weeks, months. Then one day I just saw him wearing a pair of shoes. Because by that time, he had stopped wearing shoes. He just used to wear slippers. So I just saw him wearing a pair of shoes. And I said, oh, wow. He said, I said, when did your toenail heal? He said, I cannot even remember. He said, all I remember that one day I was taking my bath. And I bent down because my soul fell down. And I looked at my toe and it was healed. The major thing is that is the consistency. That, that's what I'm going to is what is the consistency. One minute you have won your wedding gown, you put the picture up, hey, 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 I've received my miracle marriage. The next meeting, oh God, everybody has mind except me. You don't understand that you're putting yourself. What happens one minute you, you're saying, Father, I've received my pregnancy. As soon as you see your menstruation period, your, your, your menstruation, ha, ha, will I keep going like this? one minute you believe that the business will do well what happens is at any sight of a setback you just change your mind no you can't keep doing that oh this is very powerful this is very powerful instability causes delay because you keep wavering from this area to this area and most of us as soon as you see the next just the next setback your faith is thrown away and let me tell you what satan does satan knows that disturbs you so guess what he does <laughs> he throws it at you he knows he throws it he said let me disturb our faith it will throw something bad in your way so your faith will be disturbed so at, at the moment the moment that guy is coming around oh father thank you and my testimony is here but when he just says um you know i don't know if we are compatible i've been talking to you for some time I say god god the moment the moment you think you're about to get the contract it's so good but you just make an announcement you say oh what is happening because satan knows how to throw things your way to destabilize your faith for peter he made him see the storms and peter began to sink but this is what the bible says we walk by faith not by sight so when things come my way i don't understand i tell myself i walk by faith not by sight i walk by faith not by sight i walk by faith not by sight glory to god Hallelujah. say with me say i walk by faith not by sight say i walk by faith not by sight say i walk by faith not by sight so the first thing that really lingers in prayer is our instability at one and let me just say instability i've seen about faith even our desires some of you all of a sudden 
you just say i don't want it again and not that you don't want it you're just giving up you're just not stable you're not consistent with what you desire the second thing that this and and when that happens what do you do one of the things you do when you're becoming inconsistent is to take your eye off things that distract you and put your eye back on god's word the second thing the second thing this is very powerful why prayers are late are hindered is capacity psalm 78 verse 41 someone say hallelujah, hallelujah. psalm 78 verse 41 psalm 78 verse 41. do you realize that as a person you can limit god as a person you can be the limit of your prayer you can be the disturbance of your prayer psalm 78 verse 41 the bible says yes they turn back and tempted god and did what and they limited see human beings limited take note of the word human beings limited the holy one of israel so is that possible yes you can limit god how do you limit god i'm going to tell you in a practical way how do you limit god let me show you an example you, it's possible you can limit god the reason why is that you can be praying for something you don't have capacity for your capacity becomes a limitation on god have you not seen some people god just blessed them with baby boy honda baby boy car of 20 years old the way they will booger all of a sudden they can't talk to them again and and the thing is that God wants to bless you but he wants to expand your capacity so you're praying Lord I need a hundred million you know what God wants to do first God wants to turn into a man that can handle hundred million before he gives you hundred million that's why you must realize sometimes what you call delay is preparation yes. yeah, I'm not sure if you heard me sometimes what you call delay is what preparation God himself hides you <laughs> God and that that's why when you see a man testifying you need to look into their story and see how many years and months God was preparing them for this can I be honest with you yes. I am grateful for some prayers that happen later in my life because if it happened when I prayed looking back from where I am I was totally unprepared I totally did not understand what I was praying for I was just praying but God in his divine wisdom and knowledge was preparing me for the prayer how many of you know what I'm talking about to say I'm so grateful or else I will like with my own hand destroy my life glory to God some of you God will keep you until it's time to travel because if you travel now even you yourself know that Satan will know you have traveled because you just miss from kingdom of God and enter kingdom of hell. You know, some of you, I'm telling you, some of you, you think that you're mightily delayed. God is just keeping your husband for you because if he shows you your husband with your mouth and emotional baggage, you would destroy him. So God says, Let's heal you first. He said, Father, no, give me because let's heal you. He said, Father, no, he said, God, let's heal you. Because, because that's why sometimes you must, be confused, you must be careful lest you confuse preparation as what? delay hey, can, can, I, can I go deeper? if I tell Pastor Toya I want to see you and I don't give her a certain time and I come I say I'm, I'm delayed you can't say you are delayed except you know the timing I want to ask you if you don't know the timing of your life how can you claim you are delayed? The only time you can claim you are delayed is because you don't know the timing. So most of the time, what we call delay is actually preparation. Have you not wondered why Jesus Christ, for 30 years, he didn't do one miracle? 30 years. But in three and a half years, the whole world bowed to him. He was being incubated for 30 years. For three and a half years of explosion. My brother, don't jump out of preparation school. Go back there. is building into your capacity for the future the bible 
Bible says they limited God. Let me show you a good example. Exodus chapter 23, verse 29. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at nearby. Said, I, I believe that the Lord is preparing you. I, I believe that this is not a delay. Because if you had gotten that money, you would have bought nonsense. You know yourself now, don't you? So, you know what God does? God grows you to a point eh, when you get the money. Then what used to excite you does not excite you again. You now have intelligence so you can do the right thing. You, if 50 million had entered your hand before, hey, who? Hey! What did you say? Velvet. <laughs> Human being will go to club. You've not given your mother two million. You will buy champagne and sit down. People that you don't know, you buy drinks for them. Oh, because they will, they will, they will, they will, they will spray candle. Praise God. Praise God. God is kind. God is merciful. See, God, thank you. Lord, act. Lord, you always look out for me. I'm telling you, God, tap your chest. I say, Father, you always look out for me. Thank you for not giving me some things I ask for all time. Ha! Ah, because if I had given you, you would have become a prodigal son. This one we're talking about, Jesus Christ, you have Ah! Your marriage would have scattered because if you had caught you praise God Exodus 23 Hallelujah. verse 29 this was when Israel left the promised land and they were going to go into let Egypt into the promised land see what the Bible says see what God said God says in taking you so let me tell you this ahead of time God could have taken them from the promised land from Egypt to the promised land in 11 days but they spent 40 years why did they spend 40 years they were praying father let's get there god says i want to take you there but i can't take you beyond your capacity i know you're praying for this but god said your capacity i know you're praying for this god is in your capacity see why if your prayer is being is lingering can you please focus on your capacity see what the bible says in verse 29 God says, as you're going towards the promised land, I will not drive them out before you in one year. God says, I can do that in one year. Lest the land become desolate, then what? Then the beast, he says, I will have driven out your enemies, but there will be beasts of the field that will arise and multiply against you. He says, the land will become so empty and you will not have capacity to contain it. So you will have problems that cause from the land that will destroy you. So what did God say? Verse 13. How did this say I will judge them out? He said, little by little. That's what he will do. He will make sure you go to 5 million, 100 million, he will give you 2 million contracts. They give you 5 million contracts. They give you 7 million. They give you 10 million. You start getting used to it. You start growing capacity. Then they'll give you 20 million. Then you go back to 15 million. Then you build capacity again. Then they'll give you 35 million. Then you now see, ah, okay. Then before you know it, he gives you 50 million. Which you've gotten to 100 million, but it's not, it's not killing you again. The reason why is that you have built what? Capacity. Stop running away from training. Let God build your capacity. Short cut is what cuts people short. Short cut is what cuts people short. Know where we want going needs a shortcut that's the truth if they call you for a word do you want to take shortcut no you want the long road if it's what going no need for what shortcuts no where what going needs a shortcut and shortcut is what cuts you for what short allow god to cook you so sometimes I'm only saying that because a lot of us are praying and you need to ask yourself do I have the capacity for what I'm praying about and God will not put new wine in old wine skin so when God brings new wine he's trying to build capacity for new wine 
Some of you, God needs to expand your emotional capacity. God needs to expand your leadership capacity. So, as you are praying, God is working on you. So, as you are praying for a prepared place, God is preparing you for the prepared place. Someone says, Thou preparest a table for me, So, there's a prepared place. But when God has finished preparing the place, then God comes to you and begins to work on you to prepare you for the prepared place so that you don't get to the prepared place and destroy it. Praise God. Could you be the one handling, making your prayer linger because of capacity issues? They are praying for, Lord, I need, I need 200 million there funding. And God is saying, looking at you, I said, do you have capacity for that? The reason why that, when 20 million came the last time, you could not account for how you spent it. It didn't go to your business, it went to lifestyle. So God knows when 200 million comes. And God is very powerful. He that is faithful in small. But what is it? He that is faithful in small will be that's not what the bible says though bible says he that is faithful in small is faithful in what in much he that is faithful in little is faithful in much rather that means that it's not when you are faithful in small you will be god says the same faithfulness you had when it was small is the same faithfulness you will have when it's much if you cannot fight at your level you can't touch when it gets 10 times bigger Let's be honest, they're flat. This tightening bullet is not now, it's since. When you were smaller than this, you didn't tight. If you are bigger, you see not tight. Because faithfulness starts from small things. Developing capacity. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, a lot of people's prayers are lingering because of capacity issues. I want to take note. A lot of people's prayers are lingering because of what? Capacity issues. So, instead of just bombarding the heavens, can you please develop capacity? Please develop capacity. And capacity gives you staying power. Capacity gives you what? Staying power. Because when it comes to prayer, someone says, why is my prayer lingering? But also think that you don't know what you are dealing with. And, and that's the thing. Sometimes, you know, all this is a spiritual nature. You, you could just feel as if it's a normal contract. But meanwhile, the dynamics of that thing, there are spiritual and foundational problems involved. So you're wondering, ah, I should have this by now. But there are some dimensions that you don't know. Where, where, where are my photos? Come. Yeah. Do we have the ladies to bring them? Yeah, let the ladies bring them. Because they're wondering, uh, uh, see what my neighbor has prayed. This is what prayer prayer is like cooking food. Look at him and say, prayer is like cooking food. Say, why why am I praying long? What you are cooking determines how long you you cook. So let me give an example now. Come, come, come over here. When you are cooking indomie, how long does it take? Uh, Five minutes. Five minutes? Maximum ten minutes. If someone is cooking for 30 minutes, does that not be a problem? <laughs> when you're cooking in domain, how long does it take? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. When you're cooking beans, how long does it take? One hour. One hour. The question is, in prayer, what are you processing? Some of you don't know that what you are processing in prayer, you know, so you're wondering that, huh? but, but she's just prayed and got it. But what you are processing is a beans problem. Uh-huh. You can't compare a beans mountain to what? Indomie mountain. Indomie mountain. So you're like, ah, ah, but God did our own. But you don't know what it is. The problem, but see, once you're cooking beans, you have to be patient. Even the person you're cooking for knows you're cooking beans. Are you here? This is why you pray long. This is why we pray long. Because sometimes it's just a, you know, the problem is just in domain. Ah, quickly. Father, I just think you're really, 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 bam. But sometimes it's not an in domain or spaghetti problem. It's a beans problem wash <laughs> you what you wash the beans you soak the beans you select the beans then you now start the question is that are you using indomie prayer for beans problem are you using what indomie prayer for what beans problem even when you want to cook beans sometimes I don't know if you like you know my, my friend said when you want to use could you change what you want to use you know they will tell you, you should use another gas because 
you know, if you want to cook Indomie, just small gas is done. But beans, ah, what? You use the bigger burner. Some of you, the reason that you go and do kerosene, you know, that the reason why that they know will be will stay long here. Glory to God. Thank you. Let me close with the last one. Just to give you perspective. Wow. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. And this is the last reason. And what to do when prayer lingers? What to do when prayer lingers? What to do? Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Okay. So the last reason why prayer lingers and what to do is this. When prayer lingers, it could be the work of demonic spirits. It could be what? The work of what? Demon. So the first one is that people are unstable. So when they see a setback, they get thrown away so they are always oxidizing here and there so that produces the second thing where prayers also get hindered and the glingers also is because of what capacity yeah and the third reason is for demonic reasons let me show you the scripture the bible says in daniel chapter, daniel chapter 10 verse 12 then he then said he to me fear not daniel from the first day that thou didst set your heart to understand he says when you say praying and to trusting yourself before the Lord, it was fasting. Your words were heard. He says, from the first day you prayed, your words were heard. And your words were heard. And see what it says. See, your words were heard. And I have come for your words. Take note of that line. I have come for your words. Verse 13. Verse 13. He said, but the prince of the kingdom of Pasha withstood me. Now, that's confusing. Because the person talking is an angel called Gabriel. How can a physical king withstand him? Metaphorically, he was speaking about a demonic agent that was in charge of Pasha. So, he was saying that there was this demon that was in charge. That's why he said the prince of the kingdom. He didn't say the king. He was a demonic king and prince there. Withstood me one and twenty days. He said, I could not even get away. Lo, Michael, one of the chief princes. So there are angels called chief princes. I, I, I wonder we're explaining angels. They are Iraqi angels. They are angels that are called chief princes. They are archangels. They are chief princes and they're normal angels. They're Iraqi in, in angliology. You know, but that's not for today. The Bible says, and one of the chief princes came to help me. So, on, guess what? For 21 days, there was an interruption. Some of you, three months interruption. The question is this, and this I'm going to. But why did the angel prevail ultimately? The verse before, verse 12. I'll show you, verse 12. Verse 12, the last line. He says, I am come for what? Your words. He said, when there was delay, you kept on saying the right thing. Yeah. That's what I'm going to. He said, I have come. He said, the reason why I came through was that when there was delay, you kept on saying the right thing when there was delay you kept on saying father i thank you because it's done father i thank you it's done the major problem is that you don't understand as you are praying under the delay there's a contention in the spiritual and what you say will either empower your angels or disable your angel so you are you now say that uh, well I, I now i'm not getting the contract the angel just say hey but that but that don't fall hand because as you said the wrong word now you've empowered the negativity you just said oh yeah, yeah. I, I know it's not doing Be because you said the wrong thing and the bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue Hallelujah. so as things are going on he said he said hey what you are saying he said i've come for your words what are you saying are your words empowering angelic spirits in your favor or they're empowering demonic spirits in your favor Ladies and gentlemen, when you don't see nothing, though, you wake up and just get a father. I thank you for the funding that's come. I thank you because it has worked out. Just as I prayed, the path as you're praying in the spirit realm, angels are walking, back, 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 advancing your cause, advancing your cause. Interventions are going on everywhere. But you, you, you just become this I don't even know what's going on again. See, this thing if it's not coming, it's not coming. I can't come and kill myself. As you say that, demons say, Can you hear? Angel, leave it. She has given up. Let it go. It was a, it was a, uh, oh, this marriage issue. Meanwhile, Angel has been pushing the man, pushing the man. So that's really pushing the man. He said, please, 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 I can't keep myself. Oh, I'm never going to interested again. The demon with the angel, the demon with the angel, angel yeah, she's not interested. That you go back to status quo. 
Praise God. Hey. What have you been saying? The most dangerous time is when nothing is happening. Because when nothing is happening, something is happening there. Uh-huh. Only that your eyes cannot see. So you will intensify efforts by speaking. Look at Jesus Christ. Very, Jesus Christ oh, you have to be like Jesus Christ. You have no choice. Jesus Christ says the right word at the right time. They brought to him a man that was blind. He didn't tell the man and the and life and the rock. What did he say? He said, I'm the light of the world. The reason why is that he needs to see. So it's light that he needs to see. He didn't tell him what the problem was. He told him what the solution was. They brought to him when they got Lazarus' tomb. Did you notice he didn't tell Lazarus, I'm the light of the world? What did he say? He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Meaning when he got to any contrary situation, he would say what he wants to see. Because he understood what was going on. But as soon as they show you the result, you say, I'm doomed. Hey, yeah. Then you say, Can you hear? She's doomed. Duma. Uh, yeah, you say, I'm doomed. Angel say, Duma. The demon say, No, the angel of God can't do that. The angel say, You say, Doom her. I'm finished. The demon say, Finish her. Why is something that should finish you comes out? You say, Praise God. It is well with my soul. Ah. When you say so, the angel will just stand and say, Demon, you hear that, Abby? He says, It is well with her soul. Get out of here. Praise God. Stand, let us pray.